courage, kids. You're here just in time. I was about to go on our next adventure. I made sure to pack my toothbrush, my favorite stuffed animal, and lots of sandwiches. If you didn't pack a bag yet, that's okay. No worries. We're not really going anywhere. We're just gonna need to make sure we have our imaginations handy. So close your eyes with me and remember what it felt like to be on the go, to fly in the air, to go on adventures, to leave your house. Yeah, I'm kind of forgetting what that felt like too, but no worries. I think our imaginations together is gonna be enough to get us to where we have to go. So before we get going, let's go over our travel guide. Okay, Bridge Kids, we have a pretty busy travel guide. Travel guide number one, listening ears on. Let me see those listening ears. Number two, listen to your teachers. Today, that's your moms and dads. And number three, the more participation, the more fun. And number four, you can pause and come back to us at any time. All right, Bridge Kids, are you ready? Let's go. Final boarding call for flight 910. Again, this is the final boarding call for flight 910. Oh, it looks like it's time for us to go, Bridge Kids. Are you ready? Let's fly. I don't know about you, but what better way to enjoy an airplane ride than some music? So let's stand up, let's dance, and let's get our worship on.
Wow, Road Crew, that was some awesome worshiping and dancing. Our GeoQ app is sending us a list of our location clues. To help us figure out where we are today, I called two very special friends. Hey, Road Crew, it's Noah. And Mr. Bobby. Hey, Noah, are you ready for our location clues? Yep, let's go. Okay, clue number one says, in this country, you'll find a plant that could live for 120 years and grows one meter per day. That's the running length of a skateboard. Yeah, and it serves as a great protector for those who live around it. I find it pretty impressive that a plant could even live that long. That plant sounds awesome. The next clue tells us that in this country, over 300 million people play table tennis, and they even won 28 Olympic gold medals in this sport. Wow, they are good ping pong players. What's the last clue? It says that there's a wall here that spans over 13,000 miles and is held together partly with sticky rice. Sticky rice? That's crazy. It is. Sticky rice is an Asian delicacy. And I also know there's really only one country that has a 13,000 mile long wall. I know where we are. We're in China. Let's log that into our GeoQ app to confirm. Ni hao! That's basically the Chinese way of saying, What's up, GeoQuesters? I'm Juan Duran, the guide for all your global quests. And today, you found yourself in the land of the panda bear, the great country of China. Speaking of pandas, bamboo makes up about 99% of their diet. That's basically breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, can I take your order? Hmm, I'll have your number one bamboo meal with extra bamboo on the side, and I'll take a bamboo shake as well. And while the pandas are getting their grub on, the locals will be over here eating sticky rice with their chopsticks made from the rest of the bamboo. Over 50 billion pairs of chopsticks are made each year. That is a lot of chopping. Too bad I don't have any chopsticks handy. I sure could go for some fried rice. Rice is a big part of life here in China, and it's not just a delicious side dish. Little known fact, it's also been holding China's greatest defense together for hundreds of years, the one and only Great Wall of China. But back to food. Rice isn't the only thing they treasure here in the world's most populated country. Among other food delicacies are seaweed and even frogs. Mm, I think I'll stick to rice right now. Oh, let's not forget about sports here in China. They may have won 28 Olympic gold medals in table tennis, but that's not even their main sport played on the reg. Other sports include martial arts, such as karate, dragon boat racing, and of course, soccer. Doesn't it seem like all the countries play soccer? Now that you know where you are, it's time you find your souvenir. You can find it at coordinates 40 degrees north, south, east, west, 25 divided by triangle, that's where you'll find it. Did you catch any of that? If not, don't worry, I've loaded them into GeoQ. And never fear, the clue giver is here. Wand around is coming in hot. Here's what you're looking for. The average weight of one is about 300 pounds, but yours only weighs about three. 
it's holding its favorite snack, and it's the color of newspaper. Come back once you've found the souvenir. Good luck, questers! Oh, bro crew, this should be good. What could we possibly take back that's about three pounds and holding its favorite snack? I actually think I have an idea of what this one could be, but I don't want to speak too soon. So let's look back over our clues. Clue number one, the average weight of one is about 300 pounds, but ours will only weigh three. Number two, it's holding on to its favorite snack. And three, it's the color of newspaper. I don't think this is a snack humans would eat at all. I think our souvenir would be snacking on some leafy green plant life. Anyone wanna guess what they think it is? I think it's a panda. What do you guys think? Yep, it's a stuffed animal panda. P-A-N-D-A -A bear, panda bear, panda bear, panda bear. You found the panda bear. Great job, questers. There was no bamboozling you, and now you have your very own bamboo bear to take home with you. Look, it's even holding its favorite snack. You know, bamboo isn't just a tasty treat for pandas. It also makes a great place to live which is a little crazy because they're basically eating their houses. <laughs> Pandas are able to hide in the shadows of bamboo forests and be practically camouflaged. It can also be used to defend them from harmful predators. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pandas with bamboo lightsabers? <laughs> Not exactly. The bamboo is more like a wall to defend them. It's like their very own edible Great Wall of China. We all need a little protection from time to time, but do you know who always has our back and is the greatest defender of all? God. In the Bible, there's a story about two kings who were at war. There was a really bad dude, the king of Aram, and a really good dude, the king of Israel. The king of Aram was pretty bad to the bone, and he would make all kinds of plans to attack God's people, the Israelites. But what he didn't know was that there was a prophet named Elisha who was getting the inside scoop from God. Not like text messages with all the memes and emojis, but he was legit hearing God speak directly to him, telling him the exact moves the king of Aram was planning. You better believe Elisha did not keep those messages to himself though. He went straight to the king of Israel to tell him what's up. This happened a bunch of times, and it made the king of Aram so mad. For example, if King Aram's army went north, the Israelite army knew and went south. If they ordered chicken, God's people ordered burgers. Okay, well, maybe not that last part, but it was like the Israelites could read his mind. But how? The bad king sent for his army guys and demanded they fess up and tell who was destroying their plans. One of them spoke up and told them about Elisha, who was telling the king of Israel everything that was going on. This was not okay with the king, so he devised a plan to get rid of Elisha once and for all. That night, the bad king sent horses and chariots in a strong army to surround the city where Elisha was staying. Early in the morning, Elisha's servant went outside and saw the army everywhere he looked. Soldiers were surrounding them and the city. Elisha's servant began to freak out and he ran to Elisha asking what they should do. And you know what Elisha did? Do ya? Do ya, do ya, do ya? Get this, he prayed. And wouldn't you know it, the servant's eyes were open to see that they were surrounded by another army, God's army, with horses and chariots made of fire. And you know who came through to defend them? That's right, the big G-O-D. God, and that's not all God did. He made the enemy army blind. They couldn't see anything anymore. Lights out. The army was so confused that they went up to Elisha to ask him where they could find Elisha. He was able to trick them though, and he led them straight toward the Israel army. And when they got there, Elisha prayed to God to open their eyes. They were so confused when they realized where they ended up. And you would think that they were in big trouble, but no, Elisha told the king of Israel to whip up something special for the enemy army to eat, like the most epic feast ever. But for the bad guys? Yup. So that's what they did. And after their bellies were stuffed, the king sent them on their way. And surprise, surprise, surprise. 
the king of Aram and his army didn't bother God's people for a long time. God had defended them once again. You may not realize it, but God defends you too. He has so many names, and Defender is a powerful one that can give you courage no matter what you're facing. We may not be able to see God or his angels, but they're real and they're always around. There is nothing we need to fear because God is our defender. Well, that's all I got today for my pro questionators. China's been fun, but it's time to catch that Panda Express on out of here. See you next time. God is my defender. Even when I can't see God, he is defending me and fighting for me. That's because God is our defender and we can always count on him to go before us and protect us in everything we do. When I'm going through something tough and I feel like I just want to give up, I'm going to look up and remember that God is always fighting for me. We can trust him to defend us in the good times and the bad. And that's what we need to know today. So road crews say this with me, God is my defender. All right, road crew, it's memory verse time. Our memory verse is found in Psalms chapter nine, verse 10. And it says this, those who know your name, trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Will you stand up and say that with me? Ready? Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Psalms 9, 10. Great job, you guys. What a powerful verse to learn. Remember, no matter where you look, if you search, God will always find you. All right, road crew, let's play a little memory game. You have 30 seconds to stare at the picture and try to remember every item. You ready? You have 10 seconds to try and figure out what's missing. Do you have an idea what's missing? Do you think you know? If you said flip-flops, then you are correct. Good job, road crew. You have 10 seconds to figure out what's missing from this picture. Do you have an idea what's missing? If you guessed camera, you're right. Bridge Kids, I've had so much fun traveling with you today. I can't wait to see where we get to go next week. I can't wait to see what country, what souvenir we need to find. I can't wait to see what new name we get to discover, we get to call God. This series is gonna be so much fun. I can't wait for our next adventure. But remember, your adventure, it doesn't have to end right now. We have your coloring sheets and even games available for you and your family right here on our Bridge Kids page. Later today, we will be providing what we call table talk. These are questions to help keep our need to know conversation going around your family table. We will see all of you here virtually next week. Don't forget to check in with us via Facebook and Instagram for updates and some fun challenges we have going on throughout the week. God bless. We'll see you next week.